All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be making a bent I beam today. Uh, this is going to be our profile for the I beam. There's going to be a few commands that you haven't used as of yet. So one of them is going to be a midpoint line. Uh, the other is going to be converting entities. We're going to use an existing sketch to convert those entities. Uh, we're going to create a composite curve, which makes a curve more like more of one continuous sweep instead of uh, se several segments. Uh, we'll be using the sweep command and we'll also be using the curve along a pattern command. So our I-beam, first and foremost, we want to create a sketch that's going to create this I-beam over here on our, on our front view. If you look, what I want to do is I want to use half of my view. So every one of our horizontal dimensions are going to be divided in half and every one of our vertical dimensions will be um, as they are. So let's get started. So if you have SOLIDWORKS open, we want to create a new part. We want to make sure that we are in ANSI and inch pounds per second. So part is selected and OK. Um, in this case, if you look at your features command, we still have the two features that actually have color and are active. But uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to start with sketching first. So we select a sketch tab. And now we have to select the sketch command. So we're going to create a sketch that's asking what plane we want to create this on. Uh, I want to use the right hand plane, my plane oriented normal to me. Um, so I'm going to come up and we talked about the midpoint line. If I drop my chevron down, I uh, notice it has a line, a center line, and a midpoint. We want to select the midpoint line. Move my mouse pointer out and notice it does have that midpoint symbol showing up. So I'm going to click on the point of origin, hold my left mouse key down, pull it straight up and it's vertical, make sure it snaps vertical. And then I want to it's come and I want to pick a different type line. So I want to select a regular line. Um, one mouse click on the end of that vertex. Second mouse click. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Now notice I messed this line up right here. So I'm going to hit my escape key a couple times. So I pick this line. This little flyout pops up and I want to make it horizontal. I'm going to hit my escape key a couple more times. So now we have to dimension this. Uh, as we look back to our drawing itself, it said we were six inches tall, six inches wide, one inch uh, flange thickness, and one in two inch web thickness. All right, so smart dimension. This was six. Our horizontal dimension for that is going to be three because we're going to mirror this across in a little while. Uh, this dimension here was one. And now the web thickness, one mouse click and a second mouse click. And this is one that we have to divide in half. So that was two inches overall thickness. So two and a half is actually one. Now notice down here, we still have something that's not fully defined. Uh, we could do this with dimensions. Not really what I want to do. I want to add some relations to it to make this model uh, pretty intuitive. So if we change one, everything else follows along with it. So everybody hit your escape key a couple times just to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, this chevron here where it says display delete relations it has a few things hidden underneath it so we really don't want to delete any because we're pretty happy with what we have right now uh, adding relations we want to make sure that that's the one that we select and then fully defined sketch is something that we're going to do a little bit later on so we're going to select add relations notice i have nothing in my my box over here selected entities i want to select this vertical line and this little vertical line down here the lower one uh, it shows me over here on the left that I have no existing relations between those two. What I want to do is I would like, I'm going to add two relations in this so I don't have to get out of it and then come back and add another relation. So I want to select equal. Notice my sketch kind of moved around and I also want to make those two lines collinear. So what that's telling me is that basically these lines fall in the same line path. Uh, so we go ahead once we're happy with that, we accept that. And now I want to select my, I want to left mouse click out in the model space. Uh, everything is fully defined. I can look down here at the bottom right hand side of my, my viewfinder. And yes, we are fully defined. So I want to exit this sketch. Um, my left, my middle mouse button is killing me. So I'm going to use a shortcut and go control seven. Here should look like this. So we want to put that back in an isometric view. Now we want to create another sketch. So I'm going to select sketch. Um, I can't really see my plane, so I have to come up here to my part. I want to expand my manager feature tree out. Um, in this case, I actually want to be on the front plane. So I select the front plane. 
and I want to use a control 8 command because my settings are not where it automatically um, orients normal to the drawing view but in this case I really want everybody to be uh, normal to the to the drawing view I'm just going to take my mouse and move it around to where I can see what's going on um, in this case we have a sketch that runs through the center of our eye beam it's 20 inches long on that leg, 20 inches long on that leg, 10 inches high between this line and this line. So 150 degrees and it also has two 15 inch radiuses in this sketch. So we want to make sure that we complete all of those. All right. So we want to come up and select a regular line. Mouse pointer out on the point of origin. I definitely want to be on the point of origin. One mouse click, pull it out horizontally. Second mouse click, angle the line down. Third mouse click, pull it out horizontal again, a fourth mouse click, and I want to just use my smart dimension up here to terminate being in the line command. And then I want to select one of these horizontal lines. One mouse click, pull it up, a second mouse click. This thing shows it's about four inches long, but if we're going to make it 20 inches long. Now notice, it scaled my drawing. This really is a handy, handy feature that some of the other programs do not have. Um, so we scaled it. Now we're kind of drawing in our regular paper space. So the next dimension that we had was a 20 inch dimension on this horizontal line. So then we transition to where it's going to take a couple of mouse clicks to get us in the selection that we want. We're still in the dimensioning command. So I'm going to pick this horizontal line and the height between those two horizontal lines. So I select it. So one mouse click, two mouse clicks, now I'm in my dimension command. So this says 10 and 5 eighths. I really want it to be 10. And next is this angle dimension over here. Notice this line still blue, so we know that we have to do something with it. So this is a three mouse selection um, command. One mouse click, second mouse click, pull your mouse up into the paper space where you can see it. Third mouse click, and now let's put in our dimension, 150. Now notice the units right here, it's actually in, it was in degrees, so we don't really want to change that. So we want the angle to be there. So we accept that. So you don't really have to hit your F button for fit and it moves your sketch around. So I'm pretty happy with this sketch. We're fully defined and that, um, actually there is something that we need to do. We need to add these fillet radiuses in here. So let's come up and select a sketch fillet. We know that the dimension on those was 15. So we hit 15 and it is in inches. So I come and I pick this vertex and I can pick this vertex and then we accept it. So it's going to keep our corners constrained. So we want to make sure that's selected as well. So accept it and accept it again. Hit your escape command. Um, I want to exit my sketch. I also want to hit escape just a couple times. So it turned it made that sketch go from completely black to kind of a grayed out color, a ghosted color. Uh, reason being is when we get ready to do our sweep, I want to show you that I want to show you from scratch. So everybody use the control seven shortcut and your sketches should look a little something like this. So we have sketch one and sketch two. Um, they may be numbered differently if you've gotten out and gotten back into it. It just keeps track of the numbering system. So come over here to your features tab select your features tab now notice we not only have our extruded ball space and our revolved ball space but we had swept loft and a boundary now we also have an intersect command i'm not exactly how sure how i'd use the intersect command here but we want to be concerned with this swept ball space so go ahead and select that icon now notice it has a profile that you want to sweep it gives if you hover over it long enough it gives you the the command name and it also has the command for the path. Uh, in this case, our profile is that half of our I-beam. So I pick it, notice it select all, selected all of it. And it automatically moved us from the, the profile to the path that we want. So I'm gonna come and pick um, the second sketch that we drew and my I-beam is swept along here, or half of our I-beam is. So accept it, hit your escape command a couple times, control seven, and we now have half of an I-beam. Well, I don't want to do all of that again. I just want to use our mirror command. So let's select mirror. Now, as we look over here to our left, it's asking, you know, what face or plane that we want. Um, I want to drop our, our tree down, our manager tree, and I want to select the front plane. 
Now notice it automatically select it moved our selection window down to the feature. What feature do we want? I can pick it in the tree or I can pick it over here in the modeling space. Um, in this case, I want to pick it from the tree just to show you a little something different. So it gives us the preview and I'm happy with that. So I accept it as well. All right now, as we look at our drawing, we've got these holes that run down through here. I don't want to place all of these holes plus most of these are reference dimensions. If you look at this three and a half dimension, it doesn't have the parentheses on it. So we know that we can actually use this in our model. Uh, the whole diameter is 2.5 and it's also on that particular sketch that we had earlier. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to our modeling. Um, in this case, I wanna open up this sweep and I wanna actually show sketch number two. So in our feature manager tree, hit the plus sign, expand it out. I, want to, I don't want to click on the writing because if I click on the writing, it's probably going to want me to rename it. But I want to click on this little icon here. So select the icon, don't move your mouse, and the little fly out pops up. So we got edit sketch, edit sketch plane. Uh, we can suppress it, we can roll it back, we'll talk about that later, and we can actually show it. In this case, I want to show it. So now our sketch is there. It's really not that we're in, in it, but we want to use it for a reference later. So I want to cut a hole in here. We could use a hole wizard, not want to do that just yet. So we, let's do with this with a extruded cut. So select extruded cut. It's asking what face you're playing. Um, in this case, I want you to expand your tree out again, and I want to be on the front plane one more time. Everybody use a control A command if it didn't orient normal to you. All right, so now we can see the sweat profile sketch that we have. I'm going to use it for another reference. So in this case, I want to come up and select a circle command. Move my mouse pointer out and I am on a center circle. I do want it on this sketch that we drew earlier. I don't want to put it on the midpoint here. So I select I wait till this hovers over orange and it shows me that I'm going to be coincident. One mouse click, hold it down about that space, and then we want to start our smart dimension. We should only have to use two dimensions to fully define this. So smart dimension, select the circle itself, and that was 2.5 in diameter. And it was also 3.5 from this left hand edge. So I picked the, the origin and I picked the circle. It automatically defaults to the center and that was 3.5. All right, so click out in the paper space. We're fully defined. I look down here, we are fully defined. So features, I'm sorry, we can exit our sketch. We're in cut extrude. Instead of it being blind, we're in the plane, which there's material on both sides of that plane. I wanna select through all both. Notice it highlights yellow, so I accept it. All right. So control seven. Now we're gonna to get to the point where we haven't been before. So we want to create a new sketch. So we'll select your sketch tab. Now just because you select the sketch tab doesn't mean that you've selected sketch. So make sure that you select sketch. What face or plane? I wanna use the front plane. I want to use a command, a shortcut command, control eight to look at this normal to me. Now, up here we have convert entities. Um, we don't really want the intersection curve. I just want to use the convert entities command this time. So select convert entities. Now notice over here, I have nothing selected. Okay. I could come pick, I could expand this out and pick it here. But in this case, I want to come over here and I want to pick it individually. So I'll pick the line, I pick the arc, I pick the line, pick the arc, and I pick the line. So we now have all of this selected. So we accept it. All right. We now have a fully defined sketch that we really didn't do anything with. Um, I'm going to use it a little bit later. We're going to create a composite curve out of it and we're going to use that for some reference geometry. So we now have this sketch in here and we can we can use it for later references. So I want to exit my sketch. Now I want to hide sketch two so I don't get mixed up. Okay. So I'll come over here and I click on the icon. Um, up here where the eyeballs are, the glasses are, we select hide. 
you have a later version, it may show an eyeball. So we now have Sketch 4. Now, what I would like to do is I want to create this as one continuous curve. So up here at the very top of your modeling, modeling features, we want to go to Insert, left mouse click, and our drop down comes down in about the second box that we have. Um, it's got some things that we have available to us. So curve, if you notice it, it's got split line, projected, and composite. In this case, we want to use a composite curve. So select composite curve. It says entities to join. I don't really have anything selected there. I'm going to expand this out. I want to pick sketch four. All right, so we got sketch four selected and I accept it. Now notice my sketch four has disappeared, but I have composite curve number one. If I expand this out, I can change this, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep it minimized for right now. All right. So everybody, well, let's just keep it normal to us right here. So now we want to go into our features command. So we're going to move forward to one of our other things that we discussed under linear pattern. There's a little chevron there. If we'll drop it down, and in this case, we want a curve, a driven pattern curve. Um, we have these dimensions that are out here, but notice that they're all reference dimensions. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, nine holes that we want to put in here. First one is locked in space, so we really don't, we don't really, can't do anything with it. We could go back and, and modify it. So it's asking us what direction. So I want to pick our composite curve, and I want to pick it on this left-hand side. If I pick it over here, the direction might show something different. So I'm going to pick it on this left-hand side. Notice my arrow is pointing this direction. So this edge, I have 10 total. We'll just leave it at 10 for right now. Um, let's leave all of this stuff alone. So the features that we want down here at the bottom, features and faces, we could go direction two as well. But in this case, I want to come and I want to select our cut. I want them to be equally spaced and I didn't actually select my curve. I selected an edge. So I have to come up here and make sure that I select the composite curve. So now I've got this composite curve. Now notice it's pointing the wrong direction. So over here I have to reverse the direction and now I've got 10 equally spaced, but we only had nine holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got one extra hole way out here, right? Um, we have this thing down here, this little added feature. It says instances to skip. If you'll drop the double, double chevron down, notice it has these little pink nodes in here that you can actually deselect or select. So I want to deselect this last one. It removed that hole. I want to accept it and we now have all of our holes in here so that pretty much is going to everybody use a control 7 make sure you save it in the proper format and get ready to turn again to your learning management system um, that is that's what we're looking at here so we've discussed converting entities uh, we've done sweeps we've done midpoint line we've done a composite curve a sweep and curve a pattern along a curve. So with that being said, thank you and we will talk to you at a later date.